Second series, chapter two of Little Susie's Little Servants by Elizabeth Prentice. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For just at this moment, a carriage drove up to the door, and Susie ran to the window to see who had come. She saw two gentlemen alight, and presently her mamma was called down. You may come with me, Susie, said she. So they went down together, and Susie saw that one of the gentlemen had soft white hair flowing down to his shoulders. She looked at his mild, kind face with great interest, and when he placed his hand on her head and blessed her, she felt very happy. "'Mamma, is that the Apostle John?' she whispered. Her mamma smiled and shook her head, and Susie sat still and listened to what was said without speaking for her little tongue had learned that it must keep still when older persons were talking. After the visitors went away, she made up for lost time by asking several questions, all in one long row. "'Who was that man? What makes his hair so white? Did you see him put his hand on my head? I liked him dearly.' "'That was a very good man,' said her mamma, "'and I hope God will hear the prayer he made for you when he put his hand on your head.' "'That's the way Jesus put his hands on the heads of little children,' said Susie. "'I wish I had been there.' "'That reminds me of a sweet little hymn that I copied from a book Mrs. Ray lent me. "'I must read it to you till you learn it. "'Come, we'll go right upstairs and you shall hear it.' "'So they went upstairs, and Susie heard for the first time that beautiful hymn beginning— I think when I hear that sweet story of old. Tears came into her eyes as she listened, but they were tears of pleasure. She soon had learned the first verse, and they sat singing it together when nurse came in with Robbie, who had a small box in his hand. Mrs. Ray has sent Susie a box of beads, said she, and says she must string them when she does not know what else to do. Susie was delighted to hear this, and she flew off to find a needle and thread, so as to begin at once to string her beads. It was, however, time for their supper, and she had to wait. She was too happy to eat much, and as soon as she could, she hastened to the window and seated herself to begin her pleasant work. She had hardly strung a dozen beads when, looking down, she saw that they had all fallen from the string. "'Oh, dear!' "'That's because I didn't make a knot. "'Oh, how I wish I knew how to make knots. "'Nursie, won't you make a knot?' "'It's too dark to string beads,' said Nurse. "'You'll hurt your eyes, Susie. "'Come, put away your beads and go to bed.' "'It doesn't hurt my eyes,' said Susie. "'I can see just as easy.' "'All of a sudden she felt two hands over her eyes. "'Oh, Papa, is that you?' "'Please don't. I want to string my beads. See, Papa, all these beads. Mrs. Ray sent them.' "'Mrs. Ray was very kind,' said her Papa. "'But my little Susie is not kind at all. She has been abusing two of those servants that God gave her. Don't you know it is wrong to treat your eyes so?' "'I guess they didn't care,' said Susie. "'I guess they did,' said her Papa. "'and you must remember that eyes are very precious things, and be careful of them. "'If I should give you a little white-handled pen-knife—' "'Oh, Papa, I wish you would!' "'If I gave you one, would it be right for you to cut off one of your little fingers with it?' "'Why, no, Papa!' "'And is it right to injure the eyes God has been so very kind to give you?' "'No, Papa, and I won't again.' "'But what are they looking so hard at my pocket for?' asked her papa, smiling. "'Why, I thought perhaps there was a little knife there,' said Susie, rather doubtfully. "'And so there is. It was given me to-day, and I will give it to you. Only you must promise not to open it, for you are such a little girl that I do not dare to let you use it yet.' Susie promised, and her papa took her on one shoulder and Robbie on the other, and rided them, as Robbie called it, three times across the room, and then they kissed each other good night, and Susie and her box of beads and her little knife all went to bed together. 
End of second series, chapter two. Recording by Hannah Mary.